Hey guys, so now let's talk about performance. As you already know, my, uh, my system is an E5 2670V3, an engineering sample, so there are some caveats that come to it. I have the first stepping, so this is, means that uh, this is basically the first, well, first stepping, whatever comes first. Uh, why I might not be getting the full spec uh, clock speeds that uh, some other one of you might be getting if you get a later ES sample or just the regular thing. But I guess an engineering sample would be the best price for performance ratio. Then ne uh, next up, uh, when I told you that you couldn't overclock a, a, a Xeon, I lied. Because you actually can, but not the multiplier like a regular case queue or an X series, but uh, the base clock. I was able to get mine up to 0.3. It was stable in Cinebench but would crash in Firestrike, so I bumped it down to 0.2 megahertz base clock, 2% performance increase. Yeah, so. Now, what I'm doing here is not really got a full benchmarking of the CPU, it's more of a comparison of where I was before and where I'm at now because uh, I upgraded the CPU and how, I didn't just upgrade the CPU, I also upgraded graphics and I didn't want to go, go into the full comparison. If you want to see this video, ask down below and I'll do it. But uh, now we will we'll compare my old uh, system, which has an i7-860 uh, plus an R9-380. Uh, with 8 gigs of RAM versus the new system with 32 gigs of RAM, the Xeon, uh, 12 core Xeon, and the R9 390. But uh, both cards are OC'd. So let's uh, let's jump into it. As uh, first off, Cinebench because this is the best way to see what a CPU actually does and how it performs. You can see that. For like, I get uh, triple the cores and pretty much triple the score. So <laughs> it transfers pretty nicely with uh, 1357, which is more than uh, a stock uh, 5960X at, uh, at 3.6 gigahertz. But uh, once again, you can see that one a bit further. So now let's see how we actually do in, open, uh, in OpenGL performance, which would be more of the GPU side, where you get about a 30% increase from my R9 380 to the R9 390. The 380 is based on the 285, which was a Tonga GPU. The 390 is based on the 290. I think everybody knows that by now, with the AMD rebadges. I think let's come to stuff that is probably a bit more interesting to some of you is gaming performance on Xeon and uh, as you can see the improvement is roughly in the combined score 30% because of the GPU the physics score is, uh, has doubled so once uh, we already see that uh, games didn't, uh, even though this is fire strike which scales pretty well in, in game performance you will not have a, a free x scaling GPU uh, graphics score, 30%. And so uh, overall fire strike score I get uh, roughly, yes, about 30% because of GPU and CPU improvement. And next up, a Metro Last Light. Just some regular ben gaming benchmarks. I also, when running this, ben uh, when running the benchmark, I maxed, uh, completely maxed out everything and uh, also checked up the uh, CPU usage. At best, I got 30% CPU usage, so you can see there that you really don't need 12 cores for gaming, but it still runs pretty well uh, with average FPS, uh, it's ridiculous settings. Uh, with 1080p, uh, the, the new rig running at 50 FPS, the other one at 30, but uh, I maxed out uh, MSAA uh, completely, which you probably should not do. Tomb Raider, once again the same story, uh, 55 uh, on, on the new rig, 37 on the old. Uh, yep. 
uh, once again, CPU, CPU bow, there was no CPU bow back on this system or the other system, and uh, usage was pretty low. Uh, you really don't need, you probably, if you're going to game, full core CPU is the best. And then Shadow of Mortar, finally. Uh, I, that game scaled the best on the, on the new machine, but uh, this is based on the 8 gigs of RAM, uh, of VRAM that I have on the um, uh, on the R9 390, therefore uh, against the two gigs that I had on the 380, where on uh, on max on ultra settings you may need up to six gigs. This is why you see the biggest improvement here in this game, not because of the CPU performance. Now, what might be the most interesting part for your content creators out there is how does it compare in Adobe performance when using Warp Stabilizer. Uh, I get uh, a tiny, uh, it, before it did in 5.14, now 4.11, uh, tiny improvement, but it's still something. And finally, render times. Render times went down considerably. First off, checking the render time with OpenGL acceleration, I went from uh, 33 minutes on my old system with quad-core system uh, to 18 minutes, which is very, very impressive. And uh, it, even it used the all, uh, especially with color corrections, it uses 100% of CPU. If you're not color correcting your videos, you only get 60% usage of your CPU, which means you can uh, go ahead and listen to music, probably even play games you know, while rendering out uh, videos. Which, uh, which is a nice addition. And then I decided to see what, uh, how much is the GPU doing and how much is it helping. And uh, with the old system, 44 minutes, cra uh, crazy long. While the new system, for some reason, uh, deactivating Open OpenCL speeded everything up. I used the previews, I re-rendered all the previews by reach. Uh, and for some reason, I got a faster score. I cannot say why, but it went down from 18 to 16, which uh, which is st uh, still a great uh, great performance because I, re I rendered the last video, which was about 12 minutes, so it's almost real time performance. And if you will be able to overclock it, you uh, you might get even more. So as you can see, uh, what we get here is. Uh, a nice performance increase, especially in uh, rendering. You probably should not get a Xeon if you're just gaming. Stick to, to the normal Skylake CPUs. The, they have higher IPCs because uh, X99 tends to be a couple of generations behind. The new one coming up is uh, Broadwell, while we're uh, expecting Kaby Lake to, uh, to land anytime soon, which is already two generations ahead. And, uh, but, if you're creating videos, shooting videos, rendering, go with X99. Maybe get it a Xeon uh, of uh, eBay, and that way you can uh, save a lot of money and get the most of your performance. In addition, if you're gaming and streaming, more cores might be uh, help for you since games usually don't really utilize more than four cores with hyper threading. And other games, like you really should check what you're playing because. One of my favorite games, StarCraft, only runs on one CPU core. And <laughs> only having one of your 24 logical threads used, that hurts pretty much. But <laughs> that's another problem. So, Arsene, signing out. See you in the next one.